check one two all right mic levels look good hey good morning everybody uh this is murhuta mashukit el nahaga duduk el <laughs> uh, got my name changed uh within the nation so uh i'll still respond to i am hotep uh jed but um that name is used for another purpose now that i really can't tell you about but Nonetheless, uh, you know, I came to bring you another video today on, um, you know, wanting to get into this uh, subject matter jurisdiction because we at Goldemore Services feel like uh, subject matter jurisdiction is pretty much everything. Um, without subject matter jurisdiction, oh, I'm sorry, without personal jurisdiction, um, the court can't do anything with you. And so, um, I found this document on the internet probably maybe two months ago when I was trying to get my case in the federal court against the County of, uh, San Diego child support services and, um, found this document to be pretty interesting and pretty hard hitting to the core of what I was trying to get across. Um, you know, it's going over, you know, removal from state court to, uh, to federal court. There's also, um, uh, challenging subject matter jurisdiction, but this is, this is the big one here. Um, personal jurisdiction, understand that the court has to have two out of the three jurisdictional values to even hear the case um of course they have to have subject matter jurisdiction which is always up to the plaintiff seeking litigation right seeking to wrong i mean <laughs> i'm sorry seeking to right a wrong uh, in whatever situation that may be um personal jurisdiction has to be either you consented which even if you consent, um, it still doesn't mean you have jurisdiction, but that's a whole nother subject, even though closely related, you know, that's a, that's a different subject. Now, what immediately caught my eye when I looked at this paper is that traditional basis, talking about personal jurisdiction, cannot be obtained by fraud. So when um, the 42 USC 654 section three or paragraph three or whatever said it's a separate organizational unit and if they did not disclose because that's the basis of contract law if you didn't disclose all the penalties that come with child support like you know like liens uh levying of bank accounts um you know effing up your credit you know things of that nature things that are going to harm you which the government is supposed to protect, you know, your rights, your happiness and your property, then it's really fraud because you would never sign up for a deal like that. Or I, I hope you would not sign up for a deal like that. So uh, again, this is, I think coming from the New York University, um, you know, this is, a, a, the territorial jurisdiction when you're dealing with where you domicile and then express consent consent by contract form clauses enforceable but must be fair so again i'm going to ask the people you know listening and this video i'm doing uh via request because somebody was asking me you know about jurisdiction so i'm doing this via request you know thanks for uh tuning in you know to what i have to say because what everything i say what I try to convey to the public is it's substantial. And that's why I go to solid sources like college, legal, university sources, which they teach about legal matters in the law. That's where I go there and I learn too, you know, but I learn for free. They got to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, but they get to practice law in the public. You know what I mean? So, um, so, you know, consent by contract. You know, and it's, it's got to be spelled out within the con in, in the contract, right? 
consent by registration and state. I'm not. Oh, I think that has to do with like driver's licenses and stuff like that. Implied consent. Um, so anyway, I don't want to make this video too long, but consent cannot be obtained by fraud. That right there should let you know that these child support people, they play games, right? And they're going to keep, they're going to keep pulling the wool over your eyes and they're going to, they're going to keep, it's an act and it's a play. I know it's hard for people to understand this because you go to court, you go to these uh, inferior courts, which are uh, Title IV D courts, which only have special jurisdiction, and that's only jurisdiction that you give them. Uh, once you go into these courts, they start naming off like family laws, and you have to object, object. You know what I'm saying? And I know some of these, some of these fraud uh, lawyer—I mean, not lawyers, but uh, judges, these magistrate judges are throwing people in jail. Understand this, when they do that, that's a big no-no. <laughs> it's a big no-no, but you have to express before that that you don't approve, that you're not giving consent, you're not giving consent, you're not giving a personal jurisdiction to this court, and you waive all the benefits thereof. If now, if they still proceed and throw you in jail or do anything to harm you, you that will give you you already have standing but that will give you a way to move forward you just have to know what your remedy is right and that comes with the ability to write a complaint to write a motion um to write an injunction which i may have to do in my case and for another case in virginia so look up make sure your sources are solid hit the law library I bought a Federal Digest, a whole set, which is like almost five or 600 books, man. But that's how interested I am in the law. So um, if you if you listen to me, please, this is your, I would say this is your remedy. At least it is for me. Um, so let's go to my case that I filed in federal court. Well, you know, my English name is George Everett Smith Jr. So that's me. All right, so I filed this case. Well, they filed it for me on 10-13. I probably mailed it on 10-11 or 10-12. And so here's the case number and here's the case administrator, which may be the clerk of court. I'm not too sure. So it says, Mr. Smith, please find and close filed stamp copies of the complaint, civil cover sheet and filing fee receipt in connection with your case. Also includes as a summons for you to to copy and serve on a defendant the court does not serve summons now i got my case another case in virginia the courts work kind of different because in southern california which is serving the san diego area um i think this is because i'm not a lawyer and so if you're not a lawyer and you're not part of the bar they just give you the copy of the sum they give you a copy of the summons and then you're supposed to make how many ever copies to serve on a defendant the court does not serve summons because in another case that we filed that we got through in federal court too um usually the federal marshal for that court district that federal court district in virginia will actually serve the summons but since um since my next of friend is not uh, part of the bar, they didn't they had him do the same thing, which is OK, because the biggest thing is getting the case filed, following the court rules and getting past uh, the abstention doctrine and uh, the Rooker Feldman doctrine. So that's the big thing. The summons ain't nothing. So this is me right there versus the North County, North San Diego County Department of Child Support Services and the judge. I threw the judge in there. Um, I can't let you guys see my affidavit. Uh, only if you get services from me, you know, educational wise. And I show you things and how to follow uh, the court rules and some of the procedures. I mean, I don't know it all. I'm still learning myself, but I've learned quite a bit by failing right you guys seen my videos from like two years ago i failed i failed multiple times 
but you keep studying keep studying asking questions going to the right sources that are concrete and then you get you could push your case through like i did you know i finally did it so you know um you know peace to the gods man that i was able to do that so this is a summons this is the summons i'm supposed to serve on the defendant so when your case is in the state district court right in a title four d court even a title four d court is even more inferior than the state district court which people call the superior court so they're the lowest court in the land so anyway i think we went over that so so anyway this copy i filed two copies this is the old address i actually called the court and uh they said well tell the defendant where to send the copy and so i had to type a, a little letter to um um to the defendants uh telling them where to send the correspondence so it says a lawsuit has been filed against you within 21 days after i mean 21 days after service of this summons on you not counting the day you received it or 60 days if you are a united states or united states agency or an office or employee of the united states described in federal rules of civil procedure 12 a 2 or 3 you must serve on the plaintiff an answer to the attached complaint or a motion under rule 12 of the federal rules of civil procedure the answer or motion must be served on the plaintiff or plaintiff's attorney whose name and address are see i'm acting as my own attorney you know if you fail to respond judgment by default will be entered against you for the relief demanded in the complaint you must also file your answer or motion with the court. And here's the clerk of court, John Morrill, and it's signed by the uh, uh, by the deputy clerk of court. So that was on 1013. You know, you got the official court seal stamp here. Um, and so this was my, this is the title sheet of my affidavit. Um, so actually I should have put um complaint yeah i, I could have just put this is not a motion so they actually excuse me there because uh you know because a motion would be the case is already going and i'm mo and i'm requesting a hearing because that's what a motion is to to point the court in a new direction or get them to hear something different i may want to put in a motion to strike or um or they might they might want to put in a motion to strike or a motion um to dismiss the case which is which is a demurrer uh so anyway i even labeled this wrong because um when you go from state to federal the plaintiff and the defendant actually switches so really and i didn't know this i made a mistake see my name is here as a defendant because i'm thinking oh i'm just removing it I, i'm thinking it's just it's a continuation of what happened on the state district court level but it's not it's actually you're removing it but you're also um it also it's it's kind of de novo because you're filing a new uh case so if you look here i you know i did all this so i'm thinking this is the plaintiff and i'm the defendant still but the court flipped it they put me as the plaintiff as you can see here and them as a defendant because i'm suing them you know I, I filled out the civil cover sheet um and all that stuff so um i guess you guys could read this paragraph here um so i guess i guess i could read this you know what i'm saying the respondent a man george ever smith jr sui juris hereby asked for relief from the fraudulent actions of the San Diego County Child Support Services, will be known as DCSS, and their collaborating agent, Judge Penny McLaughlin, to conspire against my constitutional rights. That's that's some heavy stuff right there. I'm 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 not playing around when I write my affidavits. Uh, I strike straight to the core, you know. So and then I start to explain the last um, hearing we had was actually a motion to dismiss on the on the, in the title for d court so i said at the motion to dismiss 
at the motion to dismiss hearing on 10-3-2017 in Department 34 at 1.45 p.m. in the North San Diego Superior Court, known as the Court C Exhibit I. I put together a lot of exhibits for this paper. Uh, Judge Penny McLaughlin acknowledged my affidavit but failed to give reason, authorities, or consideration to the motion to dismiss affidavit and denied every one of my points why the case should be dismissed. And then... You know, I'm, you know, I'm going to dig a little deeper. I think this affidavit was like 18, 19 pages. Um, so that's basically my basis of how this judge is basically, she failed to give a judge, if they make an adjudication, they have to cite authorities, logic, reason, consideration, and all kind of other uh, things that they're bound by, by oath. It's not I'm bound by it. They're bound by it. <laughs> so I'm holding her up to her oath in which, you know, she's pretty corrupt. And uh, I had to point that out. And so this is a um, copy of the filing fee, you know, civil filing fee, you know, yada, yada, yada. They got their identifiers here. Payer's name. That's me, George Smith. Um, you know, paid $400 to get it in. And, uh, you know, $53 if my money ain't good. Um, there's also uh, 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 form of pauperous forms that you can fill out, which is basically a fee waiver in Latin terms. And um, but you have to fill it out precisely. And I think when I help people with that, I, I tell them just to do it themselves. But. They don't know how to fill out the paperwork and um, they don't know exactly what the judge is looking for. So to actually grant that for you. So uh, I have to work up with people on that. But yeah, man, this is this is it. <clears throat> actually, they're in default already <laughs> because they haven't uh, answered um, any of my uh, they haven't answered this civil action. So um, I actually mailed in a letter to the court. Uh, asking them, and actually it's the clerk of court, asking them to actually give a notice of default. And then you go for the default judgment. So, uh, you know, coming to you live, man. Uh, I'm in the field. I'm doing what I got to do. Okay, hold up. That's wifey. I'll, I'll call her back after this video. But, you know, we got to do what we got to do, man. This this is an educational service. Um <clears throat> you got people claiming that they're the only child edu child support education service uh, that used to be the truth, but uh, things change. Uh, plus, I don't do just child support. I do trust law. Um, I've, I'm, I'm actually doing a divorce case right now, which divorces are pretty easy. Um, they're not hard at all. They're way easier than doing this. I'll tell you that. And, um, you know. Every, you know, everybody hold their head, man. It's a brighter day ahead. Trust me. I didn't think I could do this. Trust me. It, two, three years ago, I did not think I could put together a paper like this. Didn't think I would know the things that I know now that have made me a wiser man, a better man, uh, a better more, you know. Um, and I think <laughs> okay, this is a little bit of a segue, but this is Golden Moor Services, so obviously I'm a Moor. Um, but I think a lot of brothers and sisters is confused about what a Moor is. Okay, what the white man calls a black man is really a Moor. A Moor is, is a dark skinned, woolly haired, you know, lips, nose, very distinct. That's what a Moor is, you know. Uh, when Christopher Columbus first came over here and, and Peter the Moor brought him over here, right? Because Columbus was a horrible navigator. He thought he was in India. So when he, in his journal, this ain't my words, in his journal, he says, oh, look at the Morenos are already here. So that's indicative of race because he didn't know what tribes he was talking to. And this was the Caribbean islands on which... Um, there was a tribe called the Carib. So that's who the islands are named after, and they were Moors. So I think uh, there's a little mis, 
information or maybe disinformation about that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, you know, hit me up. Hit me up on the website. Leave a reply. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Muhutha L. Signing off. Um, everybody keep fighting a good fight, man. Peace.